guards are there to protect all your body parts, but mainly most people work with their hands, and you don't get nothing but one set of those. We say, hey, how come this, this thing isn't guarded or doesn't have a guard? Well, what do you need a guard there for? Nobody's going to stick their hand in there. They're not. You hope they're not. But they do. Worker safety issues are getting more attention than ever before, not just for manufacturers, but from industrial organizations worldwide. As a result, workplace safety regulations are becoming stricter and more complex. Do you build machinery? Do you use machinery? Or are you responsible for workplace safety? If so, a thorough understanding of guidelines and directives is no longer an option. It's a necessity. And to gain this understanding, this video and handbook should be very useful. The concepts and techniques we are about to show will not only help you comply with industry guidelines, but if implemented, will protect workers and equipment, which means a safer workplace. A safer workplace reduces liability, lowers insurance costs, and improves productivity. In a building block approach, this video will briefly explain typical machinery hazards and guards, review selected relevant safety standards and guidelines, and then present contemporary principles and practices for designing machine guarding safety systems which address the hazards and guidelines. We all know that injury and equipment damage can occur during almost any kind of manufacturing process, especially during operations where there is crushing, shearing, cutting, pinching, and the potential for electrical shock. Movable machine guards are used to protect from these hazards. Three common types are used. Sliding, hinged, and liftoff. All three types can be opened or removed to allow the operator to clear jams, apply lubricants, make adjustments, or load and unload materials. This ease of access may present a hazard to workers while the guard is open and dictates that precautions be taken for protection. Recognizing these hazards, OSHA, ANSI, and other standards-making organizations have created specific guidelines for machine guarding safety systems. They require that workers be prevented from accessing a machine's hazardous areas until safe conditions exist. This can be achieved using machine guards which are tamper-resistant and use interlocks designed to shut down the machine when the guard is opened. However, even if guards are tamper-resistant and have an interlocked access, they still may not protect workers unless they function properly when needed. To ensure this, many guidelines recommend that the safety system be control-reliable. A safety system is control-reliable only if it's designed so that any single component failure doesn't prevent the machine from stopping and prevents it from restarting until the problem is corrected. Next, in this video, as we go into design principles and practices, we'll show methods for achieving a safe machine guarding system and control reliability. An effective machine guarding safety system can be achieved through the application of certain principles, which include the use of risk assessment, positive brake contacts, positive mode mounting, tamper-resistant designs, redundancy, safety circuit monitoring, and positive guided relays. There isn't any single formula or component for achieving a safe system. Different safety control systems and components are needed, depending on the type of machine and the manufacturing process. As a general rule, however, more elaborate systems become necessary as risk level increases. But exactly how is this objective, consistent determination of danger levels accomplished? 
The relative danger level of any given machine operating environment can be quantified by applying a methodology known as risk assessment, where these factors are taken into consideration when ascertaining potential machine hazards. Severity, S. Frequency of exposure, F. Possibility of avoiding, P. One method of weighing the various factors and accomplishing risk assessment is demonstrated in this decision tree. This popular method categorizes assessed risk into five levels, ranging from B to 4. At level B, the severity of any potential injury is slight, and the likelihood of occurrence is relatively small. Level 4, the highest level of assessed risk, is characterized by frequent exposure to situations where the possibility of avoiding a severe injury is difficult. The best time to carry out risk assessment is during the design stage. This way, engineers can eliminate potential hazards before they occur, as well as determine which risks cannot be eliminated through design considerations alone. Most often, serious manufacturing hazards which cannot be eliminated during the design phase are categorized as a level 3 risk. These generally can be adequately addressed with a control-reliable safety system. Now, how can we achieve control reliability and other levels of safety assurance as determined by risk assessment? The next sections will show you other principles and practices involved. Let's start with a diagram of a basic machine guarding system consisting of a movable guard equipped with an interlock and an associated machine control circuit. The machine stops when the guard is open. At first look, it seems simple and effective. However, unfortunately, some movable guard interlocks don't always stop the machine when they're supposed to. That's because design and plant engineering personnel frequently interlock them with conventional position sensing devices, such as those shown here. Traditional limit switches, inductive proximity sensors, magnetic reed switches, joy plugs, snap action position switches, hall effect sensors. These conventional devices suffer from a variety of shortcomings. First, because the contacts are opened by a spring when the activator is not held down, the devices may fail due to a broken spring or from contacts welding or sticking. Second, they're easily defeated using a piece of wire, tape, scrap metal, or with some switches, even a simple magnet. Consequently, these conventional position sensing devices do not satisfy contemporary guidelines for machine guarding safety systems. This is not to say effective safety systems are out of reach. Let's look at what is required. Positive brake contacts are a basic tool of the safety interlock switch designer. These are normally closed contacts, which, as the guard is opened, are directly forced to open by a non-resilient rigid mechanical drive mechanism, thus interrupting the circuit and causing the machine to stop. By design, positive brake contacts will not fail to open due to a contact weld, or the failure of a spring, or some other resilient opening mechanism. In contrast, spring-driven contacts, often found in conventional limit and snap-acting switches, such as those mentioned earlier, are not positive brake. Spring breakage, or insufficient force to overcome a contact weld, would result in failure of the normally closed contacts to open when they're supposed to. In other words, it would not fail to safe. Compare these two open guard designs. Because in this configuration, the contacts are forced open, the interlock switch with positive brake normally closed contacts is obviously preferable. You can determine whether or not a switch has a positive brake design by checking for a circled arrow marking. The circled arrow is an international symbol identifying switches with a positive brake configuration. Positive brake contacts are one element of an effective machine guarding system. Another element is the use of positive mode mounting. Positive mode mounting refers to the way a switch is physically mounted as an interlock device. 
To gain full advantage of positive brake contacts, they should be mounted in the positive mode. Mechanisms mounted in the positive mode are driven directly by the safety guard. This causes them to directly force open normally closed contacts. In contrast, the force to open the normally closed contacts of a switch mounted in the negative mode is provided by an internal spring. In this mounting mode, the normally closed contacts may fail to open when the safety guard is open. In this negative mode, not only can the switch fail, it can easily be defeated or bypassed, often simply by taping down the switch actuator when the guard is open. Thus, positive mode mounting not only provides safety assurance, it deters tampering, adding a tool to our quest for designing an effective safety guard control system. Tamper resistance is also heightened by adding other switch design features aimed at deterring deliberate bypass. Machine operators frequently use simple tools such as tape, a paper clip, or a screwdriver to disable or bypass safety interlock switches. Whether motivated by a desire to increase their production rate, decrease in convenience, or just to beat the system, the consequences can be serious. Manufacturers of safety interlock switches have met this challenge by coming up with several difficult-to-defeat designs. One features a geometrically unique actuator key, which, upon removal from the switch body, operates a multi-function cam mechanism to actuate the switch. It's easy to see how this type of device achieves a higher level of tamper resistance, satisfying relevant ANSI standards, and, when built into a positive brake contact design, achieves a higher level of safety. Now that we understand basic safety interlock switch design and mounting principles, we can move forward explaining how to achieve safety system control reliability by adding redundancy, safety system monitoring and control modules, and positive guided relays. Achieving redundancy can be as simple as using two interlock switch circuits instead of one to monitor the position of a machine guard. If the first interlock switch circuit fails, there's a backup, thus adding an element of reliability and addressing the first half of the control reliable guideline for overcoming a single component failure. The other aspect of control reliability is preventing successive system cycles until the failure has been corrected. To address this, you need a way to monitor the safety system. Self-checking safety system fault detection and control modules, often called safety relay modules, do this by monitoring elements in the safety control circuit as well as their own internal components. All circuit monitoring modules feature positive guided output relays. Unlike conventional relays, positive guided relays are designed with normally open and normally closed contacts, which operate interdependently. In a conventional relay, as shown here, a contact weld does not prevent the remaining contacts from changing state. However, due to its design differences, a contact weld in a positive guided relay prevents the remaining contacts from changing state. For example, should one or more of the normally open contacts weld or stick shut when closed, the normally closed contacts in the control circuit will remain open. This prevents successive system cycles until the failure has been corrected. As you recall, this is the other basic requirement for a control reliable system, that the machine cannot restart when in such a condition. Many safety circuit monitoring modules are also capable of monitoring external positive guided motor contactors or control relays through use of a feedback loop. In addition, microprocessor-based designs are capable of providing visual system diagnostics, which help locate the safety system fault and minimize downtime. These safety relay modules are designed to detect as well as identify safety system faults. This concludes our review of selected machine guarding principles and practices. Hopefully, they've given you the tools you need. 
When utilized and applied, they'll help you achieve safety levels which meet or exceed industry requirements. Let's recap. We've discussed machinery hazards and guarding. We've discussed representative industry standards. And we've provided a basic overview of safety system concepts, design principles, and practices with which they can be addressed. These have included control reliability, risk assessment, positive brake contacts, positive mode mounting, tamper resistance, redundancy, self-checking and safety system monitoring, and positive guided relays. No longer need safety solutions be inconsistent with the state-of-the-art equipment which poses the hazards. We encourage you to examine your machinery and manufacturing processes for hazards and to consider if and how you can use one or more of these tools to create a safer work environment. We'd be happy to schedule a product demonstration, send additional copies of this video, provide other available tutorial material, or arrange for an in-plant seminar by one of our product specialists. We encourage you to hold on to your Man-Machine Safeguarding Handbook. It contains the answers to frequently asked questions as well as relevant information concerning machine guarding industry guidelines and standards. If you need further assistance in designing your system or in selecting suitable components, please contact us. We look forward to helping you create a safer, more productive workplace.